Greetings, this is Alex, and I have some tips for playing Chivalry 2 that you might know, but you also might not know. I have put together some advanced mechanics to help with combat, some awkward stuff just for the spectacle of it all, and other useful gameplay things that might just make you appear cool in a YouTube video intro. There are 14 of these tips to get through, and I can guarantee at least one of them will impress your fledgling medieval warrior friends, so let's start the siege. Castle reference check. First, let's say you really want to turtle up at one location, but there's no nearby place to restock your precious arrows. Well, if you have the extra preparation time, you can lodge a grouping of arrows into a nearby surface, go trek to that restocking point, and head back to your nice little makeshift archer post. Arrows will stay lodged in something for a minute and 30 seconds, letting you just pull them out whenever you need to resupply. You can also just shoot them straight into the ground as well if it has a soft surface. Next, after you obviously decimate someone in one-on-one -on -one combat, you can add insult to terminal injury by removing their head after they are defeated. This functions as a throwable projectile that can deal some damage, and also strike fear into the entire lobby thanks to your barbaric inspiration. Victory! Woo! Next, this is a fairly basic mechanic in the game that for some odd reason I barely see anyone use. How do I know? Well, most all of the hanging traps are just sitting around unused in most servers, at least until this video is out, where all of you will be putting them to much better use, right? If you see something daintily hanging in chivalry, chances are you can damage it to send it plummeting onto helpless victims. Next, the crossbow class's deployable shield and the standard bow class's fire brazier can be stood on to get a slight height advantage. You can use this to get up to some tricky locations on the map that you may or may not supposed to be able to get to. Sometimes this can give you a great new line of sight, or other times just put you into a terrible position that you should have never tried getting to, like this idiot. Next, do you want to ultimate humiliate someone in Chivalry 2? Well, guess what? The classes that throw out the healing medical packs do in fact deal a little bit of damage. Since these count as a projectile, they can also be used to activate traps in the environment if you really want to keep a hold of your main weapons. In medieval times, it's not called showboating, it's called morale. Next, if you've played any of the ranged classes, I'm sure you've seen this exact moment happen numerous times. What does most everyone do? Well, they usually just run straight at archers trying desperately to rush them down. However, you might be surprised how often this works, but simply place down your spike trap thingy at the last second and watch those tunnel vision warriors just sprint right into their own demise. Next, arrows that are traveling at a slow enough speed can actually be caught out of mid-air. Now this isn't terribly useful information yet, and I've yet to pull off this next technique, but I have seen the interact prompt flash briefly on screen when an enemy's arrow whizzes by. If anyone out there can manage to catch someone else's arrow out of mid-air, hit me up with the footage on Twitter at BoomstickAlex. Good luck. We are at the halfway point, slugs. Are you going to put this garbage to use, or am I going to have to micro your controls as well? Oh, you say your arm is missing? That's no excuse, my grandmother's missing three. All right, motivation's over, get back in there. Next, this one is more of a PSA for Dark Ages etiquette, but when you're in a big clump with your allies, don't be flailing away with your wide sweeping horizontal strikes because you will be smacking all of your buddies. In hectic encounters, try to stick with your vertical overhead attacks and straightforward pokes. Definitely do not be that guy who is always taking down their own teammates. Next, a brooding intimidation tactic. When you have snagged a hand chicken, you will find that all of your emotes are replaced with fear-inducing poultry sounds. Enjoy. Alright, let's be honest, that last one really wasn't much of a tip, so here we go with a real one. I was playing around with the viability of crouching to dodge some attacks since it doesn't consume stamina and had pretty hit and miss results, so instead of that, let's increase your chances of survival when you're really outnumbered. 
when up against more than two enemies, you don't want to try to do any regular attacks, dodge, jab, kick, or anything fancy really. The only thing that will likely work in this kind of situation is attacking only after a block to initiate a riposte. If done correctly, your riposte attacks will either be hitting a few enemies or at least be sapping multiples of their stamina. That brief window of extra block you get right in front of you, along with doing horizontal attacks as wide as you can possibly whip them around, is the best way to sometimes see these fights through as the victor. This is one of those tactics where third person helps quite a bit, and you might need to bump up your sensitivity to quickly spot the closest oncoming attack so that you can block it and activate that super buff during a riposte. Whatever you do, don't just give up, because you're not going down without a fight. Next, something really simple, but crossbow users can also light their bolts on fire just like the regular archers. If you buddy up with a bow user, maybe try offering a biscuit, you can also take advantage of the fire damage buff from their brazier. Next, the replenishing item chest you might initially assume is just for archers to restock their arrows, actually also restocks your healing bandage. If you're a melee class, keep an eye open for where those chests are at so you can bravely run away to replenish your healing. Next, if you're close enough, you can shoot someone with an arrow, rip that thing straight out of them, and shoot them again with the same arrow. This also applies to melee weapons as well, which lets you continually chuck them at people, grab them back, and throw them again. You probably already knew that, but use it more. Next, if you're lucky enough to keep your head and most of your limbs attached, you might enter a down state before death. Don't just always retreat to an ally who may or may not pick you back up, because you can punch while you're down. If you land enough hits to fill the meter in the center of the screen, you can stand right back up and sally forth back into battle. Next, and last, maybe least, if you're playing a ranged class, you might want to be visible to others as little as possible. Lucky for you, jumping in chivalry doesn't deter your aim, letting you hide completely behind certain things and pop up to take your shots. It's going to be much harder for anyone to hit you, but also harder for you to land those shots, so I hope you equipped your mouse. And that's it, I promised 14 tips and I think I counted right, but hopefully some of those you found to be useful in chivalry too. Now if you happen to enjoy my gameplay systems and mechanics focus, consider sticking around on the channel because stuff like this is what I churn out week to week. Let me know if you're playing Chivalry 2, and also let me know what your thoughts on it are. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and good luck with your medieval shenanigans.